goodness, would you look at this? The sun is coming into my room. These things, I've been holding onto these for a long time. These are Audiosource AC6W in-wall speakers. You can see them right above me. And I was hoping that a solution would come to me that would just help me get rid of these, but uh, it hasn't, so these are going on eBay. But if you would like them, uh, please let me know. I got five pairs. I think one of the pairs is only a single, so I got four and a half pairs. So I'm thinking like $20 a pair. If you want them, please get in touch. I do enjoy getting ready for things. And I actually think that's why I like editing videos so much, is because I love organizing and getting things put into their proper place. Editing gives me the same good feeling while I'm doing it. It's not like I just like the result. I actually love the process. In fact, the process is more important to me than the result. Well, that's maybe not true. Maybe they're equally as important, but cleaning a room and editing a video give me the same sense of satisfaction. Now the part that I don't like as much is adjusting tripods. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting. These two trees have just been dropping acorns like crazy. I'll be sleeping or in bed and I'll just hear doo -doo. Taking a bunch of stuff to get donated. It smells like clothes. If you've been watching the vlog for any amount of time, then you're probably aware that I'm on a quest to only have the essentials. And then also the things that I really, really enjoy, like my video game collection. It's interesting to look at the generation gap between like my mother and myself. But to her, getting rid of stuff is like this traumatic, scary experience. But for me, it's a liberating experience. Of like, oh man, I don't have to think about this. It's gone. It's out of my life and I've got all this free space that I can use and enjoy. That's how I think about it. Anyway. Alrighty, my car is empty. Bladder is empty. That's irrelevant, but... I explained on yesterday's vlog that the mod worked really well. Let me explain what the problem was real quick. This is a US PlayStation. This is a Japanese PlayStation. A US PlayStation will take American discs. A Japanese PlayStation will take Japanese discs. Once you have modded your PlayStation, a Japanese console will take Japanese backups. An American console will take American backups, but it will also take Japanese backups. A Japanese console, however, will not take American backups. So on that second attempt, I got a Japanese original to work on the console, but when I put in an American backup, I didn't realize that this game needed to be patched to be a Japanese region game. For whatever reason, Japanese consoles had this extra layer of security that mod chips never got around. They need to have the correct region as well as the mod chip. Whereas the US version didn't even need to have the correct region. So this backup right here is an American region game and an American region disc. If you take an American region game and patch it to be the Japanese region disc, you can put it in your PlayStation and play it. Which all of this I figured out after disassembling my PlayStation, remodding it, assembling it until I found it on the internet that the Japanese modded console needs to be done this way. So I actually ordered a second mod chip for my US console so that I could use any type of disc from any region all in this one console, which is great. But the good news of all of that is, is that the soldering iron worked. That's totally not what I meant to say. I meant to say the good news is, is that my modding job worked. I'll never forget it, man. In ninth grade, so we had homeroom, which was basically, you go to this class for like 30 minutes where they take attendance and stuff, and then you go to your regular classes. And you don't do anything in this class except for just like talk with people and they take attendance. And this is weird that he's being mentioned on this vlog again, but this guy, Steve Hoyt, he would download bootlegs of PlayStation games, and he would do this on dial-up. So he would leave his computer on for like 48 hours downloading ISOs of games. Back then we used like the parallel port mod chip where you had to plug this thing in and then you had to like put in one disc. And I always wish that I had a proper mod chip to do that. I would get the bootlegs from him. This is like, I don't even care about playing the games. Just being able to download a game, literally I can download any PlayStation game that's ever been made in 30 seconds. I can burn it and I can put this in here, no swapping, I just press power and it turns on. That's just so much fun. But anyways, it's just very exciting to me and it's like finally figuring out something that has been completely a mystery to you and you're just like, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I knew what was involved with that. And then you're just suddenly able to do it. It feels really good. But also, something really cool you can do. Thank you.
is you can take games that you actually own, like Final Fantasy Tactics, that has a terrible, terrible translation, and patch it with the translation from the updated version of the game that was released on a different system, burn a copy of it, put it in here, and play it. And you can do all of this on original hardware with an original CRT TV, well, not original, but a CRT TV, hook it up with the best quality analog signal you can get, and it looks incredible. And you're playing it with a real controller and it's like... So actually, German engineer just asked what I think of emulators. I usually don't want emulators. If they come in little packages like this, I totally want emulators. Probably the closest equivalent is how people feel about vinyl records. I just love the feeling of like looking at that actual console being used and you're using the real controller and you got this old bulky TV, but it's beautiful. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful image. It's kind of fun to like have that ritual of actually playing it. It's not as convenient by any stretch of the imagination and there's so many more things you can do with emulators, but I don't know, it's just fun. That is gonna do it for today's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Also, in the illustrious words of Game of Thrones, winter is coming. You can feel it in this garage. See you tomorrow. Hear that? That was an acorn. <laughs> Speaking of almanacs, I always thought that almanacs were real. Are they in some instances real? Like if they're historical? I don't know. Because I... when I was growing up, my grandma got the almanac every year. And the weather prediction, like the big daily weather predictions, and they are just spot on. Really? They were when I was a kid. And that was How long. How old were you though? Like in junior high, high school. Like I spent a lot of time with my grandma. <laughs> we'd get the almanac and we'd go through it and we'd look for stuff.